So my name's Ronwyn Sayer, but that's a bit of a mouthful. So people call me Rona for short. Um, and I wanted to start by thanking uh, Geshe Namdak and everyone who's worked uh, with me to a great extent in putting this program together. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who supported me through this, uh, through this process. So uh, thank you very much to everyone. Um, and uh, just by way of preface, what I'm going to be talking about uh, in the next few minutes is all based on the assumption that we will be able to have a campus course at Jamyang in London starting in September. If we're still unable to do that because of the COVID-19 restrictions, then we'll be um, putting together an alternative entirely online uh, delivery for the program. Um, but I won't be talking about that today. Uh, so today um, my description is based on the ideas around having a campus course and an online uh, delivery of the course as well. So now I'm going to try and do the uh, desktop sharing for the presentation. Um, and this is probably when my PC will collapse and I will, um, I will vanish, but we'll see. Wonderful. So I hope you can all see that. Um, I shall be putting a copy of the presentation into the chat feed uh, at the end. So if you, um, you won't have to take too many notes as we go along. Um, so you'll need your chat window up so you can pick up the presentation uh, at the end. So we start with this wonderful uh, image, image of Lord Buddha with all the traditional protectors around. Uh, this image uh, is, the, uh, is the, the logo, but it's also really the embodiment and the total summary of the entire basic program all condensed down into a single picture uh, where we see Lord Buddha, but we see Lord Buddha in his teaching, uh, teaching um, pose, uh, wearing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, robes of a, of, a, of a teacher in our tradition. So it really sums up the whole, uh, whole of our program. That didn't work. How do I get to the next page? Oh dear, I don't know. Ah, there we are, good. So I'm going to talk about the uh, FPMT basic program, which we're going to be delivering at Jamyang Buddhist Center London from autumn 2020 to summer 2026. So I think you all guessed that's what I was going to talk about. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about the program. Um, I'll skip over the subjects because Geshe Namdak gave us a wonderful overview of the subjects, but I've put them into the presentation for reference. Um, I'm going to talk about the structure of the program. I'm going to talk about the support that we offer to the students, that we're going to offer to the students. I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, the admission requirements because uh, you know, you do need to have some background and existing understanding in order to, to really benefit from the program. I'm going to talk about how you complete and graduate from the program. I'll talk a little about the personal conduct that we will be expecting of the participants. Um, and then what next uh, with this program? How do you, um, you know, enroll for it and what's going to happen next? So that's what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, we're going to offer the program our main original idea, and that's continuing, is that we're going to offer the program as a campus course. And we're also going to offer it as an online course uh, based on live streaming of the teachings for those students who uh, are able to, um, to uh, be available at the time of the live streaming. That's the preferred route for remote students. And we'll also make recordings of Geshe Namdak's teachings available, which students who are not able to participate in the live streaming will be able to study uh, and follow in order to uh, follow along with the program. So we're offering uh, the three options. Obviously, the campus course is the most preferred one. Uh, the online course with live streaming will give the next uh, greatest level of, um, of um, you know, uh, integration and, and uh, following along with the course and following the recordings as the, as the third offering. Um, but because this is a, a program that requires uh, quite a level of commitment, um, we're only making the program available to students who register in advance. 
Uh, and we would ask that students register for an entire subject at a time. We're not asking you to register for the entire five and a half year program and pay all the money up front. Um, I don't think that would seem terribly reasonable, uh, but we will be asking students to register for an entire subject at a time. Um, and as a result, um, we are of the, uh, the level of commitment that's required for the students. We're not going to um, really open up this program to drop in or auditor participation. So people, we, we, we're really not willing to have people dropping in and out for individual weekends of teachings. Um, we do want students to register for an entire subject at a time. Um, uh, Geshe Namdak went through the programs. I went through the, the different uh, subjects of the program, but as I said, I've just put those in there for reference. So, so uh, the structure of the, of the program. So uh, we're going to offer the FPMT basic program, firstly as a campus course. Uh, we will be um, offering and the students will be studying the nine core subjects of the program. Then there, at the end of that, uh, there's a review and a three-month LAM RIM retreat uh, to seal, seal the program for the campus program students. And subject to satisfactory completion of the review and the retreat, then um, students receive the uh, basic program completion certificate. And Francesca and Andras have got theirs already, or going to get them very shortly. And Alison is, is working hard on hers and should get one uh, in due course. For the online course, the online offering of basic program consists of the same nine core subjects and a review, but only a one month uh, sealing LAMRIM retreat at the end. And for the students who study the online course, they receive the basic program home study completion certificate. So there's a different um, level of commitment to retreat and a different um, level of certification of certificate offered at the end. And the timetable for the entire course over the whole five years, at least it's a draft one at the moment, I've attached that at the end so people can see what periods they'll be busy and when there'll be um, a break or whatever. And that's attached at the end for reference, but I won't go through that uh, here. Uh, so what's going to be the structure of the, of the program? Uh, so each subject will be taught over a series of weekends. There'll be one per month spread out throughout the year, but not every month in the year. Uh, Geshe Namdak has retreat uh, commitments back in India and other teaching commitments as well. So he's not with us uh, the whole year. And so he will be teaching a series of weekends during the year. And students are encouraged to attend the teachings at Jamang wherever possible. Uh, for students who are taking the campus course, the students who register for the campus course, they're required to attend the teachings in person to be at Jamyang. And the online students, they're required to attend either via the live streaming or via the recordings. And they have to view the recordings within one week of, of the original teaching period. And you'll see why that is in a minute. Students who are unable to attend the teachings are scheduled due to emergencies, family commitments and so on. And we quite understand that things come up. Five years is a long time um, and things will come up. So students who are not able to attend um, the teachings either in person or online may catch up via the recordings. Um, but really we, we hope students will only, only miss uh, no more than one weekend per subject block. Because if you miss uh, more than one, uh, one weekend per subject block, it really becomes quite hard to catch up um, because, as I said, this really is quite an intense program. And students who are repeatedly unable to attend the campus or the online sessions uh, may no longer be eligible for the completion certificate. Of course, they can continue with the program. Uh, you know, um, coming along and, you know, studying and so on. But if, uh, if not a sufficient level of attendance is possible for, for students, then they won't really be eligible for the completion certificate. Um, as several people have already indicated, um, although this is called a basic program and, and compared with Geshe and Amdak's 20 years of, of Geshe studies, it certainly is basic. Um, but I think to position it in terms of Western education, um, I've got a master's degree in Buddhist studies and um, I would say that this course is um, at the level of a Western master's degree, if not, if not somewhat deeper 
because it's going to cover a wide. So I think in terms of the level of study and, and, and application required, it's, it's at that level of a, of, a, of a Western master's program. But of course, this covers more subjects and goes on for longer. So that's how I would position it uh, if you're thinking about the level of commitment that's required. Um, so what are we going to offer students by way of support? I mean, it's not really um, practical to just expect students to turn up for the teachings and then go away and, and beaver away on their own for everything else. So um, in the first place, for the online students, uh, it is important that, that they're able to interact with Geshe Namdak. I mean, um, that's one of the huge benefits of the campus course. Um, you know, um, there's a great deal of interaction with Geshe-la, um, but for those online students uh, who uh, may never be able to visit Jamyang in person, to support them, there will be a live Q&A and meditation session with Geshe-la um, provided for students in each time zone group, because we're thinking of grouping students together based on, on, on convenient time zones. Um, and so online students will get an opportunity to have an interactive uh, Q&A with Geshe Namdak in different time zones every month or so. Um, and on a regular basis, a week after each teaching weekend, there will be an online Q&A and &A meditation session run by the teaching assistants. Now that will be uh, a week after the teaching, so that will require the students all to be up to date by the time that session runs, which is why anyone who is pursuing the program based on the recordings will have to make sure they viewed them all by the, you know, within the week so that they're up to speed by the time this interactive session comes around. And this will be run more than once uh, each time in order to cater for the groups of students in the different time zones in the way that I explained before. And students must attend these. Um, it's a very important that the, the interactive discussion and Q&A is there to help students deepen their understanding um, of, the, of the subjects. And just, uh, just through reading and hearing, you don't really develop that understanding as, as, as all three of our graduates have explained. Uh, the whole interactive and Q&A and discussion part of the program is extremely important in, in coming to, to develop that depth of understanding. And during the periods when geshe is not teaching, so that's December, January and February, um, we'll have periodic review sessions, again interactive, where students can come together and discuss amongst themselves and with the teaching assistants the things that they feel they would like to get more, more depth on or things that they're unsure about and so on. And then finally, um, in, in, in an effort to um, try to uh, support you know efforts to reduce climate change and so on all the study materials we put be provided electronically um, and we hope that you'll all be able to manage them electronically but i guess if you have to print them out well you have to print them out so um we will be um expecting students to have a certain level of understanding before they begin the basic program and so um, how will we, how will the, the students achieve, you know, have achieved that level of understanding? So um, anyone who's completed, already completed, or is well on the way to completing the Dis FPMT Discovering Buddhism course, uh, or who completed the Foundation of Buddhist Thought course um, with Geshe Tashi up till now, um, these courses will have provided the necessary background for the basic program. Um, as Francesca and I think uh, Alison said, it's still quite a stretch, um, but really some background um, is very, very important. Andrash as well, are very important. And these two courses will provide, have provided the appropriate background. Um, also students who've previously completed part of the basic program already, but may not have been able to complete it, um, are very welcome um, and have the, ha will already have the necessary background as well by having um, you know, been part of the program previously. So students who want to complete the program and may have uh, done some of it elsewhere are, are very welcome and will have the necessary background. But other students who want to participate, um, they will need to demonstrate an, an appropriate level of knowledge gained through practice or experience or study of other programs or whatever. Um, 
and as part of the, the process of, of applying to take part in the course, we'll be discussing this with everyone who applies. So everyone who applies for the course, um, we'll have a little chat with them. Ooh, what happened there? Someone's drawn a line on my presentation. Was that you, Geshela? That's wonderful. I didn't know you could do that. Huh? Great. <laughs> okay, yes. So, um, yes. So, um, um, everyone we will be discussing this with. So, we want to make sure that, it, as, as people said earlier, it can be quite a shock when you first get exposed to this kind of wonderful material. It's incredibly beneficial to study and we want to make sure that people don't suffer burnout or, you know, intellectual, um, you know, um, shock uh, as a result. So we want to make sure everyone understands, you know, and has the appropriate background. Um, and each subject uh, series, so each uh, run through a subject, we'll finish with a questionnaire. Um, and the teaching assistants who are uh, provided as part of the program at Jamyang will um, do an assessment of the uh, of the uh, of the questionnaire. It's uh, we're going to be uh, uh, making sure through this that everyone's kind of you know not being completely phased by what they're studying, and then you know there'll be feedback and that and uh, that will enable people in the subsequent review sessions to maybe ask questions or get a, a, a recap of things that they haven't quite uh, kept up with or whatever. Uh, and the whole teaching program uh, ends with a review uh, that's conducted by the FPMT BP coordinator centrally by the FPMT Learning Center. So this is the period that Francesca was talking about when all the students are interacting with each other with these review questions. And then there's a, an exam at the end. Um, and that's how the, the teaching part of the program completes. And then to seal the program and strengthen students' motivation and practice, the entire program finishes with a lamb rim retreat. Um, as other people said earlier, the campus students undertake a three month retreat, but that's optionally available in one month segments. So if you want to go away and do a three month retreat, that's really wonderful. Uh, there we are. <laughs> and uh, online students undertake a one month retreat. And then students re receive their completion certificates. I explained there's the, the basic program completion certificate and the basic program home study completion certificate. Students receive their completion certificates on successfully completing the review and the retreat. Subjects, as I said earlier, to a satisfactory attendance record. So um, this is a, an in-depth Buddhist study program. And so we are um, asking uh, the students to, uh, to um, review their personal conduct and practice during the program. So uh, as well as the academic rotation recruit requirements, uh, the program includes a requirement for a certain standard of conduct and practice. So uh, students should conduct themselves in accord. I haven't noticed a typo there. Students should conduct themselves in accord with Buddhist ethics based on the five lay precepts, the five lay vows. So abstaining from killing, stealing, lying, sexual misconduct and intoxicants. And students are required expected to practice awareness of positive and negative states of mind as one of the particular elements of the program is all about mind and how it works and so you all have been able to develop a greater understanding of how the mind works and that awareness will, will um, come out of that naturally and developing the practice of patience and concern for others you'll find during the program that the practice of patience for others is quite a Quite a, in quite high demand, you might find during the program. So uh, it's not required to take the vows. We just would would wish people to follow the, those five guidelines. But if you wish to take them, that's definitely to be encouraged, and we can arrange an appropriate uh, appropriate way for you to take the five lay vows. Um, now, basic program students fulfil this requirement for personal conduct by applying themselves to the practice to the best of their ability. Sincerely and honestly, we're not going to come around and police you. We're not going to go peeping through your bedroom windows or anything uh, or giving you a breathalyzer, although we have got one at Jamyang in a cupboard somewhere just in case we need it. Um, and basic program students assess themselves uh, as to how they're fulfilling these guidelines. 
but guidance will be offered if students need um, you know any a pastoral care um, about how their their con conduct is developing during the program so students should never be afraid to ask uh, ask about this so what next um, well registration for the program opens on the 21st of July uh, it says that on the uh, on the uh, the web page uh, and for your diaries the first three weekends are the 5th and 6th of September the 3rd and 4th of October and the 31st of October and the 1st of November so anyone who wants to take part can pencil those dates in now and the program begins with the stages of the path studying Anton Carper's middle length lamb rim which as uh, Geshla explained earlier we have an initial part of that then we do some work on tenets and then we finish off the stages of the path uh, and there will be a suggested donation for each weekend subject to status and no one will be excluded because they cannot afford to participate it is a suggested donation and details of the level of the donation there will be a, a sponsor level and a participant level and a level for people on reduced means and Sangha members and various other aspects and details of all of this will be made available on the 1st of July we're still working on that because as you can understand there's quite a lot to think about and each subject block some of the larger subjects come in two blocks each subject block must be committed to in advance and the first block consists of six weekends and also what next well when you've completed the basic program you can sign up for the master's program which is even more wonderful and uh, at least one of our students who is uh, graduating about now from the previous basic program has already signed up for the master's program that is truly wonderful here's an example of a successful basic program graduate um, it's actually um, the uh, Shantideva, the author of the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, which is one of the subject texts. And um, Shantideva achieves at one point a, a, a correct understanding of the nature of reality and um, levitates up in the air to join Manjushri uh, and they disappear off while a voice continues reciting the text after, after uh, Shantideva has achieved this. And that's one of the texts you're going to study. So here is a wonderful example of um, what might happen to you if you thoroughly understand all of the material in the basic program. It hasn't happened to me yet, but you never know. Uh, and there's the timetable that I said I would attach at the end. So that's really what, uh, what I had to say about the structure of the program and all of the various elements and aspects that are going to make it up so i hope you found that useful and i'll attach the program into the chat window uh, chat sorry i'll attach the presentation into the chat window uh, in a minute so thank you everyone and there'll be a q a soon i think thank you